Welcome to Yorktown, Virginia. 160 years ago, this fortress was the linchpin of the Confederate defenses on the Warwick Line. Yeah, Greg, and today, April 11th, uh, this place was the site of the most unusual hot air balloon accident. The notion of aerial reconnaissance using hot air balloons was a curious novelty in the early days of the American Civil War. The Federal Army famously developed a balloon corps led by Professor Thaddeus Lowe, and he brought three of his contraptions down to the peninsula to help provide spotting for the Army of the Potomac. Many generals ascended into the sky with Professor Lowe to try and study the enemy positions. And while in theory this should have provided very useful intelligence, in practice, the amount of actionable information was pretty limited. The woods and swamps of the region allowed troops to hide from view, and bad weather or windy days limited the opportunities to ascend. And of course, guys did like to shoot at you too. <laughs> That's right, uh, there are actually no recorded instances of a hot air balloon being shot down during the war, but guys did like to shoot at them and it did force the balloonists to stay back from the front lines. On April 11th, General Fitz John Porter wanted to go up for a view of the rebel earthworks around Yorktown. Professor Lowe was nowhere to be found, and rather than wait for the expert, Porter decided to go up alone. Porter's trip turned out to be rather more eventful than he expected when one of the ropes broke loose. Right, and hot air balloons during the Civil War weren't exactly like the ones today. Back then, balloons were always tethered to the ground by up to four ropes, but in the absence of the professor, General Porter ordered the men to only use one rope because he wanted to go higher and faster. I'm guessing one rope was a bad idea, huh, Dave? The rope broke free and carried Porter West over the Confederate lines. He could have very easily been captured or killed. But Dave, Porter got lucky and the wind changed direction. And to his credit, he had been up in balloons before. And so he climbed up into the rigging and adjusted the gas valves and actually made it back to Union lines. And once on the ground, he did manage to sketch out the rebel defensive position that he observed from above. That accident did curtail the use of Lowe's balloons. Uh, and interestingly, the Confederates had a balloon of their own on the peninsula. It was named the Gazelle, and her captain had a very similar accident here. And Professor Lowe's balloon corps was disbanded a year later. The incident became the talk of the camp, and McClellan reportedly said, and I quote, You may rest assured of one thing. You won't catch me in the confounded balloon, nor will I allow any other generals to go up in it. Later this week, we'll be going to Richmond for the monumental Confederate War Council. How will the rebels deal with McClellan's overwhelming force? It won't surprise you to learn that there's a major strategic disagreement over what to do and how to do it. Join us in Richmond.